that last call. <laughs> guys and welcome back to the channel so in today's episode we're going to be picking up with another uh, featured car video now as you've probably just seen the car that we're going to be looking at today is a wicked Skoda now I've seen this car a couple of times and I'm really fascinated by it because I don't really know a lot about Skodas to be honest and I'm really interested to hear what uh, the owner Dan has got to say about it, why he's got it, why he loves Skoda so much. So I think it'll be a really interesting one. So I hope you guys will, of course, enjoy the video. We're just pulling up to the spot now. So we'll get straight into it. There it is. This is the Skoda in question. And what a car. As you can see on these early stages, it is. And here is its owner, Dan. Hi, yeah. How are you doing, Dan? All right, mate. You? Fantastic, mate. Absolutely fantastic. What a car. Now, I know absolutely nothing about Skodas. And I'm, I have to ask the question, first of all, why a Skoda? <laughs> well, my dad's always had Skodas um, through growing up. So I've been to school in them, been on holiday in them, you know, day trips and stuff. So it's all I know really, I mean, you tend to find it's the same with most families, they, you know, once they're a Ford family, they're, they tend to stick to Fords and, and that's it, but, but yeah, here we are, I'm a, I'm a Skoda man, so, yeah, I wanted something different, um, I were looking at a Skoda Estelle or a Rapid, but uh, I did see this pop up, um, so yeah, I uh, I ended up swapping it for a Vespa. I had a Vespa, uh, did it all up, and then ended up messaging the guy, um, and we did a straight swap. So but, you've got, um, so was it like this then when you got it? No, it was absolutely knackered. Um, <laughs> it, was, right. it was rotten. Every corner was rotten. All the front panel, um, even the fuel filler had fallen out. So I had to uh, make a new piece for the fuel filler and uh, weld all that back in. Even though uh, I didn't know how to weld, but <laughs> we soon learned. So. so you've had so you've learned how to weld. Yep, I have. Uh, I've had to learn the hard way. Thin, rusty metal with a flux uh, a flux core gasless MIG welder. <laughs> so yeah, taking us time. But uh, a lot of people said, oh, you won't weld that with that. But we got there eventually. So, and then um, wow. I ended up roller painting it with the, uh, the horriblest color I could find on the internet. So, <laughs> so yeah. what, what color was this then when you, when you got it? So originally it was a mushroom brown, which I found under the dash. That was the original color. So okay. It's the only piece left that's the original colour. Right. And um, someone had then painted over that with a chalk paint, but they must have had um, moisture in the compressor or something because there was just bubbles everywhere. Honestly, if you, oh, if you were blind, you could you could read the story of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, we ended up uh, sanding all that back off and then um, roller painting it cost me about 80 pounds, so. But that's quite a cheap paint job. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, when you when you run into posts like I have done here the other day, it don't really tend to uh, affect you, you know. It's not really a 3,000 pound paint job that you're crying over. <laughs> I'll nip back home and uh, put some more brown on it and she'll be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely ace. So yeah, it came with the uh, original 39 horsepower one liter engine um, i was going to say when you pulled up um where we've just met 
that did not sound like a 1.3 litre yeah. engine in yeah. the slightest. No, uh, yeah, it was originally a, a 988cc, so it was the lowest power Skoda engine you could find in one. And obviously after 52 years, it probably lost a few of them ponies as well. So, well, I used it for a year and to be honest, it was faultless uh, and I tried to blow it up. But it just would honestly it just <laughs> no, no excuse to actually yeah. get rid of it and swap it <laughs> yeah fantastic so that's still sat in sat in the container uh, just chilling there but uh, we ended up putting this twin cam 16 valve uh, from an mgtf wow uh, so looking about 115 120 horsepower so quite a marked difference from what yes. I had before. Yes, so let's just say uh, the brakes will be next. <laughs> yeah. That is just remarkable. So you've you've done this yourself. You fitted this engine. Yeah, me and my friend Ronnie, yeah, we've we've done all the fabrication, all the custom water pipes, custom engine mounts, custom intake, well uh, well did it all up myself. Wow. As you can see. <laughs> Uh, custom uh, Mate, it's that housing pipe that runs down the back there i'll tell you a story about that uh, we put the engine in plumbed it all up ended up with a uh, gasket leak from the water pipe that runs around the back there oh right so instead of taking the engine back out i just cut all that out there and pushed it back so i could uh, retrieve the water pipe <laughs> <laughs> i was not taking the engine back out again <laughs> So uh, I'll sort that at a later date, but it's only been in here for five, six days, really. So, you know. Barely run in then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really. So, but uh, obviously they're renowned for head gaskets, uh, Rover engines. So I've uh, already done all that stuff, head gasket, new gaskets, water pump, tensioner, um, new belt. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's all ready to go, really. Uh, the carbs are from a Suzuki GPZ750. Um, again, I'm not really a carb tuner or anything like that, so it was just a case of playing around with them to get them correct. But I just ended up lifting the needles um, on the throttle slides as much as I could, um, and then went through the drill, uh, jet drill set. So there was a 112 main jet and I ended up drilling them to a 160 so we could get that all the fuel we needed on, on full throttle. So yeah, it's all right now. There's a, there's a little bit of a, a stumble down low, but I think once we get them balanced up and stuff, they should be all right. So Smashing. That's awesome. Obviously, with the original stuff, the uh, radiator used to be here in this Right, hole. okay. Um, so, obviously, to fit the, all this stuff in, I had to take the radiator up the front. I had to install it in the front. I just okay. I used a Skoda Felicia radiator and fan, and then just some uh, copper pipe from Screwfix. So, Excellent. Job done. <laughs> wow. I, I love the ingenuity. It's, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 so pretty. This, I mean, this car is so eye-catching, so, right? Because that's the other thing. Because it's left-hand drive, so this is not originally from this country. I'm assuming no, the fact it's actually from its hometown, um, Czechoslovakia. So it is original Czech car, but it had been imported to Germany and then got um, imported to the UK. And then I think I've, I'm like the third or fourth owner of it in the UK, but the previous owners didn't really do much to keep it on the road. It just kind of fell to bits. So yeah, we ended up saving it, but uh, it's so my you've, you've come to the rescue. Yes, very yeah. much. <laughs> well, it's actually my first car, so uh, see, I learned to drive in this. You learned to drive. <laughs> yeah. I wow. Learned. I mean, fair play to you. I mean. Most people, myself included, when I, I learned to drive, I had my mum's Mark II Fiesta, and that would be sort of the atypical car. I mean, what we're talking, that was about, I've been driving now, Christ, 23 years now, 24 years this year. Yeah. Uh, but the, sort of the atypical car that you would 
you would go to would be something like a Fiesta or a Corsa. Okay. You've ended up jumping into a left-hand drive Skoda. Yeah, 1972. <laughs> that is quite extraordinary. A, a brave step. Yeah. A brave step. And, and the, the fact as well is that you've you've done all the, the, the work on this car, all the welding, the paint, you've done an engine. Is it, I'm assuming the gearbox is, is that? Yeah, stock four speed gearbox. Uh, and I've used a Fabia flywheel, a Fabia clutch. We ended up shaving two kilos off the flywheel. So it, it just revs pretty insane. Wow. It's fabulous. I bet this car just gets, you must just get all the attention. Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to look at people <laughs> waving and you know, stuff like that as you're driving down the road. But, but yeah, my passengers certainly know about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's amazing. It's, it's very, very eye-catching. I mean, sure, when you would turn up to, to car meets and, 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 and shows and what have you, people we'll see the, the wrath of all the focuses and fiestas, which is all well and good, seeing lots of them, but then they'll see something completely off the wall, off the scale that they've probably never seen before and yeah. go, I've got to take a look at that. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I've got to check out and see what this is. I, that's that's what I, I kind of like personally. That's the, the beauty of car ownership is when someone appreciates what you've got especially if it is something really unusual yeah. that's what attracts me personally to 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 cars of, of this sort yeah it's definitely. just the fact that it's just different it's so unusual yeah yeah I, I like unique cars as well i like i like to see when people put their own touches on cars and definitely just, yeah it's it's fab i'm I'm sold on this. So this looks like a cherry bomb exhaust. Yeah, so it's I mean, you could you could definitely tell when you were pulling up. <laughs> yeah, so it's a four to two to one straight to a cherry bomb. It's about two foot long, so that's why it's uh, so loud. Up. It spits flames, and I need to move my tow hitch because it started melting it. So. <laughs> Oh man, wow. Absolutely bro. Do you mind if I open them? Yeah, the yeah, sure. crack on. Oh, the smell of the 70s just hit you. Hammerite. Paint, <laughs> fuel. <laughs> I love this. Just look at this. I love the steering wheel. Oh, it's got the, yeah, the, the, the uh, Skoda badge Yeah, on. it's 3D printed. My friend 3, oh, wow. 3D printed it for me, so, yeah. Oh, brilliant. That's a nice touch. I do like that. Yeah, the, the steering column. Love the speedo as well. The, the column's actually off a Mini. A Mini? Um, right, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, so the steering box has been removed. It's a uh, rack and pinion. Um, it's, got, it's actually got a wide track, um, later 80s Estelle front beam on it so as you can see the what the rear wheels are quite tucked in whereas the fronts are quite stuck out okay it's got a wider track front beam from an Estelle ah uh, yes I can see that now yeah yeah so uh, because the box was removed there's a little bit of custom work in, uh, in the rack as well so that's uh, that's from a mini which makes um, steering wheels easier to get <laughs> yes yeah absolutely I had, uh, my first car was a Mini, I had a, um, I can't remember, if I think it was a 13 inch Mountney steering wheel and it, it, it just looked the absolute business. It was horrible to park because it had no power steering at all. Yeah. This, and because it being so small, it was a nightmare. Yeah, this but, is the same. But it, it was, it was such good fun. Yeah. This, as you say, this is what this is. It's these just cars raw, are yeah. There's no power steering, there's no servo brakes, there's there's nothing. It's it's so raw, you've really got to be a driver to 
<laughs> to enjoy it if you would. <laughs> so, yeah, I had to put um, a low pressure facet fuel pump and um, even that was too much. So I had to put a fuel pressure regulator in there as well. Black got that set up now. Fantastic. Got a nice roll cage in it too. Yeah, there's, there's a story. Uh, the story with that, the, uh, I don't wanna... the roll cage, uh, one second, okay, yep, the roll cage actually came from a guy called Simon in Shybrook who, who's been rallying for years and he's actually found that from a S110R coupe. Um, rally car which is the two-door version of this okay um, so I bought that from him and I just had to uh, squeeze it in a little bit and um, alter it a little bit to get it actually to fit in because the S110R coupe's lower and wider so I just had to like squeeze it in a little bit and bend these bits in to get it to get it to go in but it looks a, a business it's an aluminium cage uh, Obviously old school, but uh, I don't think it'd pass um, regulations nowadays. <laughs> but yeah, it's all hand painted. I've just whacked it on, you know, cheap as possible. <laughs> it's not a garage queen. It's not a show car. I want to actually use it and uh, send it through some woods at some point. Already had it round Blyton Park track, so yeah. So you've taken this out yeah, already yeah. on a track day? Yeah, I've had it round Blyton Park, absolutely fantastic. Oh wow. Even with 30 odd horsepower, <laughs> really brilliant. You could just use everything all the time. There's no need to break, you know, it, it was brilliant, yeah. Great experience, but uh, got fed up with the Hondas flying past me, so I thought I had to do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. What a story. What a fabulous story. It's grand. It really is. Skodas have always had that association, haven't they? Have just been cars that people have make jokes about and laugh about. Yeah. And I look back now and you could you could understand because obviously they had that reputation of just being a bit of a joker's car, but they've they, they certainly from my perspective. I mean that this this that would this sort of car would have been part of that joke scene, but now look at it, yeah. it just isn't. It's it's something that it stood the test of time. <laughs> Most definitely has, yeah, absolutely, and and I just love the fact as well that this car has had that that history of it being. In Czechoslovakia, as you say, it's been imported and it's been rescued. The fact that you've done all this work yourself to get it to how it is now, the, to the character that it is now, the fact that you learnt to drive in it, yeah, I think it's <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> I actually, I yeah. love that. I, yeah, I can't. I, I can't. Play to you, mate. I've got to be different. I can't be the same. I can't. I couldn't buy a polo. Just not in my nature. <laughs> <laughs> what What does your family think? Well, my missus don't like it because there's no heater and it's cold. You know, there's there's a few gaps and stuff in there, so it's a bit breezy. But, but I do have another car, so uh, she prefers to go in that one. <laughs> this This one's just for me, really. It's great. Yeah. Very, very appealing. Very appealing indeed. Absolutely super stuff. Definitely a challenge. It, I mean, I'd be nervous about taking on such a challenge as this. Personally, I would be. And I mean, I like to try and do what I can um, on my own cars. But I know that if I were to try and tackle something extensive like a, an engine swap or just even body repairs, I'd be nervous. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that you've just jumped straight in and just gone, how hard can it be? 
Yeah, it's I mean, a that, testament to you, mate. I were nervous, you know. There were times where I'm thinking, bloody hell, can I, am I cut out for this? Can I do this? So, you know, I've had to bring my dad in a couple of times. But, uh, yeah, we, we got there in the end, so... I mean, the, the front splitter it might look a bit silly, but because the engine's in the rear, there's no weight on the front at all. Um, so, over 60 mile an hour, that makes the biggest difference, honestly. <laughs> yeah, that keeps the front down. Wow. Because it just gets really floaty, at, you know, at higher speeds, so... So these wheels, they look like Wellers. Yeah, they're Wellers from yeah. a Volkswagen Beetle. So the Skoda shares the uh, stud pattern with the Beetle. Okay. Four by 130. So... Uh, Wellers look, just look good on most cars. Yeah, I mean... I, I they bought, do just look good on so yeah. many cars. I bought them, uh, put the rears on, all like, yes, fine. Went to put the fronts on and the centres didn't fit over the hub. So I was uh, a little bit annoyed about that. So what I did is took the hubs off and sent them to my friend Ronnie and he laved the hubs down for me so they will fit on. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a big shout out to Ronnie for that one then. <laughs> yeah, Ron, Ron's the man. He's been the brains behind <laughs> the swap. Yeah, Ron, Ron's made the... Uh, all the oil pump stuff, all the engine mounts and stuff like that. I made the intake. Uh, this is just some uh, roofing rubber that I've made um, a gasket from. There's, you know, there's nothing expensive. It's all just scrap stuff, really. <laughs> so it's great. Yeah, it's just a cheap classic car. I mean, I've got three and a half, three and a half thousand pound in it, so. That'll do me. I don't plan on getting rid of it or anything. So I just really want to use it and get it out there and, and let other people enjoy seeing it as well. So brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, um, I would love to be a passenger out in this and have a ride out. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Do you fancy go for a ride yet? Yeah, let's go. Wicked. Oh, wow. <laughs> it feels so weird being on this side and with having no steering wheel. <laughs> anything with this car, anything in your pockets, it's having it. It's so low. It's a bit rich, but uh, <laughs> we'll get there. I need, I need to put it on a rolling road, really. There's not a lot of room in here. That's the only thing. Yeah, I was gonna say it's, uh, it's, it's definitely uh, cramped. Cause you're like me. Yeah. 
need another gear, don't we? <laughs> I genuinely was not expecting that. That's, <laughs> that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, not a lot of people expect it to drop the lights either. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> It's comfortable in here as well. Yeah, we've got them VRS seats. Just uh, take us time on entering corners because the brakes aren't very well. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. 20 quid gone. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, proper. You don't need a lot of horsepower in um, a 50 odd year old vehicle to make it, you know, somewhat. Uh, make it sing and dance. Sing and dance, <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Wow. Absolutely super. Genuinely, genuinely love that car. Yeah, it's thrilling now. <laughs> like I say, it just sucks the money out of you. So what do you want? <laughs> do you want to drive it or do you want to keep your money? <laughs> very good. Very, very good. I'm guessing the tyres won't be lasting long either if you keep going off like that. So. <laughs>
What an absolutely insane car that is. Unbelievable. What a fabulous machine. Right. Okay then guys, so that was uh, that was the feature video of the Skoda. Dan Skoda, what a cool car that was. Hope you guys, of course, enjoyed the video. Massive thanks to Dan for showcasing it, of course. Absolutely fantastic. Very accommodating. He's really put a smile on my face. I hope he's put a smile on yours too. So if you did like this video, do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't give it thumbs down, any comments you want to put forward would be greatly appreciated. And of course, if you'd like to support our channel, then just hit the subscribe button at the end of the video. <laughs> Amazing. Right. So until next time, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and for giving us your continued support as ever. And we'll see you in the next episode. Take care of yourselves. Cheers now. Bye bye. <laughs>